I'm a captain, Ms. Udo Barwani. I'm an airline pilot, and I'm going to share with my life experience, and hopefully, going to benefit from uh, this short interview we're going to have it today. Best lake. I like it. Yeah. Best lake. <laughs> All right. So once you're flying, so before you turn to the final, final to land, yeah, that's a base lake. All right, how do you get innovation? <laughs> For me, it's not like I was my dream job, to be honest with you. My dream job to work as in the Navy. When I finished my high school, so the only thing I applied, I applied for the Navy, and uh, unfortunately, my last stage of it, I didn't make it. So, so it's a second step. Even though I applied, to be honest with you, I went to, but uh, I didn't go to the right channel. I went to another place. I said, ah, because your grades, you know, capable to be a cadet. So yeah, and then a year later, when my cousin, I, he applied for, for the cadet for the, the one of the airlines. I said, how did you do it? And even though his grade was lower than mine, he said, no, I, go, I went to another place. I said, okay. So when I went to the other place, then I got it. And at the same time, my friend was pushing for us. I said, let's go together, let's go together. So it wasn't, it's just by chance. So I managed, I went and I got the cadet. And unfortunately, my friend didn't make it. We were supposed to go together, but he couldn't make it. So we started from there on. Was it my dream job in the beginning? I said, all right, this is what I have now. Because I was in college and then I went to Bank Institute before that, I didn't like to be in a bank because it's, especially when I went to job training, I said, no, it's not a, not, not a job I want to do. And I don't like to do the same thing. You woke up in the morning, seven o'clock. In aviation, you just do. You could do it at night flight, in the morning flight, in different times. So from there on, I started press trick in Scotland. And then I moved to Australia and I started in Adelaide. And then I finished my flying in Bankstown, Sydney. And that's it. Then I started my aviation. Motivation, yeah, motivation and passion. It's always the aviation is every day, even though, for example, you do to Salala, but it's not the same Salala every day, it's different. There is a weather, there's a passengers, there is a, a your crew, it's always there's some motivation, you find it, and uh, you keep it up, the passion, as we said. You always have a new challenge, even a small one. But it's a challenge. A small one is a challenge. Challenge of weather, challenge of technical, challenge of... It's always there's something it motivated to go do better. Yeah. Because I got to the... All right, I applied two airlines different. Before I applied to two different airlines, I applied the first one, I didn't, I didn't make it. It was a big airline, I didn't make it, so I didn't know what happened. Uh, but the second one, yes, I managed to do it, uh, but this time I went to a proper way. How, uh, how is it, how do you do it, how? Because when I did my interview, I thought it was normal. I, my flying, uh, they have to do this simulator, it was, it was okay for me. And then I said, then you see someone guy, other guy with you, they're very good, they switch on, they, they answer all the question if you don't, and then they don't make it. So I say, it's, it doesn't depend. You could be ready whatever you are, but it depends on the assessor. Is he, does he, does he like you or he doesn't like you? I mean, he, they find, they have certain criteria to, you have to meet up. Your personality, it could be so smart, but you have a very zero personality, you see. You, you could know all the technical, but you don't have that uh, skills of flying. You know, some guys I know them with a switch only technical, but they don't have it. Yeah, so so it's not that easy to apply, but you could prepare, you always could ask your colleagues, whoever they did it before you, what they want, or how they're looking at it. And that's it. You take it from other people's experience to, to apply for other the airlines. Yeah. And always do a search. Always a search. Especially nowadays, it's very easy. Just open one of the search engines and uh, ask for it. Yeah.
Why not? You know, when was it? 60s or 70s? There used to be five guys in the flight deck. Yeah. Until 90s, the, in Concord, there used to be three. I think 747, 200, there was three of them, and now two. Yes, it's scary because it's going to be limited uh, pilots, but uh, nowadays they do it with the drones, right? And yeah, hopefully not in my time, but yeah, it could be. Yeah, people get scared and everything, uh, but imagine that there's trains with no pilots or what call it engineer, what do they? They don't have anything. It's just computer. Someone in the office is uh, driving a train. Yeah. It could be one day, it's scary, but yeah, it could be, it could be. But we need a pilot, so we need someone there. I don't think they're going to call a pilot, it may be going to be a monitor or something, just in case a technical or something like that. But yeah, one day, yeah, I think it's going to be a single pilot, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, because this is what I believe. Yeah. Because who thought going to be a drone? Who's going to be, who thought going to be, used to be a flight engineer, he used to be a pilot, first officer, he used to be a captain and he used to be a navigator, you know, and then all gone nowadays. Nowadays it depends on FMS and they have captain and first officer, and that's it. Unfortunately, yeah, when is it? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so you could call the bush flying. When I started my career, I used to fly in Fokker, Fokker Friendship, that's a Dutch aircraft. So I used to fly over the airfields, all the airfields. So that's the only thing because there was nothing, no navigation. You have to look at the roads and everything, so you have to fly. And uh, it's a bit, it was a bit challenging. Once I remember I was flying New Airport and I was flying with one of the captains and they told me, all right, bring the chart. It's not even the chart. It's just uh, a drawing of satellite image from, uh, yeah, a satellite image. All right, let's fly. Then I took it. I said, hey, do you have it? And it, apparently that area, there's two names, right? It's like a, like a Rehan 1 and Rehan. So I, I took the wrong chart and the captain didn't check it. So I went to it and said, all right, where are you going? I said, hey. and I said, no, you brought it halfway. So he said, all right, where are you find? So we were looking at, apparently the airstrip is behind one of the dunes, sand dunes. So we were looking at that and, and I saw the sand dunes, so we had to go back and quickly to land and everything. That was one of the interesting, yeah, then the, the Fokker. Then when we moved to ATR, it was a kind of pleasure. There's uh, GPS, and there's, uh, so yeah, it was easier for us. But in Fokker, there was nothing. Yeah, well, yeah. In, as experience, bush flying. And as experience, yes, we're starting. But of course, we would like to be an uh, airline. Airline is much better. Yeah. Bush flying is more thrilling, maybe. It's really in the beginning, you know. Yeah, in the beginning, if you want to. But uh, later on, no, 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 no. I want something to. Yeah. I, it takes me from A to B and exactly where to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, thanks God, thanks God, there was no incidents. The only thing that was challenging the weather. Only thing they will have is weather. It's the weather. For me, it's mostly it's weather, it's, ba it's badly. Because the weather is a challenging, a big challenging. Because it's, I remember once I was going to, I was still in there for that time, we went to Bombay. It was bad weather. It was very, very bad weather. And unfortunately, that we have to use the shorter runway because as the longer one, it was closed. The state of maintenance, so shorter one. And we had to hold, I think we hold it for almost half an hour until, because it was so busy. Everybody was single runway landing that time. So we landed it. But I saw the captain. He was literally standing up, pressing the brakes. Literally standing up in the middle. And I said, what is he doing? I said, I have to help him now. So I was helping. Anyway, and it was a small aircraft. It was 737. We managed to vacate. And then the, one of the airlines, they landed it. It's the same thing. The third one, they overshot. Overshot. It was 747. They overshot out of the runway. But thanks God, it was nobody got uh, maybe small injuries, but nobody died. No, it was enough fatal. This is the weather. So I'm telling you, the weather, people think, ah, oh, it's just a small... I know the guys that like uh, clouds and everything, but for us, it's a different thing. Because two years ago, there was a storm in London. 
So I was going to London with a 380 and then uh, it was, everything was fine, smooth, uh, not smooth, of course it was bumpy and everything, so when about to land, Winshia came out, Winshia, Winshia, so have we do Winshia maneuvers. So I went around, I came back again, I said, all right, what's happening here? We did again the approach, same position, about 200 feet to land. We had to go go around, winch here again. I said, all right. Now, you could see the panic. And you could hear the panic from passengers. Even though it's a big aircraft, you could, but it's 500 people in back there. You could hear them. Yeah, I said, all right. And the procedure is that if you could land in that my previous airline, if you can't land in the same air, uh, airway, uh, sorry, runway twice, you have to change the airport or change the runway. So I said, all right. Let's try to land the other runway. If we can't make it that we'll go there bed. So I landed it. And um, as I said, it's 500. You could hear the clapping and the whistling. Everybody was happy. And the crew later on, they told me that people were crying. Everyone was praying. Yeah, because to go around is not easy. And, it's, and unfortunately, most of the accidents happens after third attempts. If you read it, the uh, accident reports, the third attempt, unfortunately, people, they crash. So, yeah, it comes to my mind. So, it's not easy the way that people think. So, yeah, the turbulence, it's sometimes you get severe turbulence and everything. Yeah, so it's, it's not him. But as a technical, no, never had it. I did in cyclone in Japan. I don't believe that. In, I know in ground it is so strict, but in the air, once it's coming down there, it's so smooth. I was coming from Beijing to Nagoya in Japan. And then during the approach, oh, it's my first time flying through the cyclones. It was an experience. I was a bit worried. I said, what should I do? But it was so smooth, so smooth. I said, what's happening here? But before we get in there, we got a call from the company. It said, don't land because of wind limitation. Yes, we could land, but the aircraft can't be departed later on. So yeah, we, go, we had to go back to Beijing. Yeah. As I said, the weather is bad sometimes. Once, even when I was in 340, going to, yeah, going to 340, I was hit by a vortex from 777. Ah, it was severe, you know. 340 is a big aircraft, you know that. It's a big aircraft. But we hit by the vortex from the 777. The aircraft banked badly. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know how was it, but it went up to 45 degrees. They were coming down and we're climbing. So I saw it. I said, ah, it's okay, it's that 340, what's gonna happen? <laughs> I was shocked. It was bad, it was bad, the aircraft got 45. And the uh, procedure is that just keep it the autopilot, let it deal it with it, don't touch it. Yeah, and unfortunately, because you have an attempt, yeah, you want to correct with yourself, so you try to correct it, but you make it worse. So. Uh, I uh, feel good, of course. Your first solo, yeah. You to be a captain. Your first flight, you'll be a captain. They want you to tell you you're finished. You're, you're already a captain now. Then you're excited to be a captain for the first flight. And uh, my first flight I did, I was going to Narita. I remember that with the two guys because in Narita it's long flights, so we have to get a three crew. <laughs> yeah, that is why I had a technical, not technical. After departed. And uh, the guys are uh, very experienced. They almost they say they had the uh, same hours like I used to. And so after departure, I had a technical. Everybody was trying to immediately. It's a small technical, but they were all such concentrating. They were talking to the technical. I said, right, guys, guys, guys. So I had to. I said, guys, all right. I know we have to be relaxed and everything, but we're in a takeoff roll mode now. So just relax. Let's finish with the flying then we'll concentrate with that technical thing. Yeah, because you know, you have to, do, it's a priority. As your instructor, you know that it's a, a Viet navigate, then communicate. So, yeah. So we said, we well, last fly the aircraft, then we'll, we'll navigate it, then we'll communicate, then we'll solve it. Because it wasn't that uh, like an engine failure or was a fire or something. It was uh, one of the system failure, I can't remember what is it. But it was, uh, it was my first, uh, as a captain, to fly that, yeah. And I remember in my line check as a captain to be cleared. They say the, the always is something happens. It happened with me. There was this new engineer, 
So we're starting pushback. So I told them, uh, tell me to, if you're ready for pushback, to so release the pack break. The guy told me, Roger. I said, all right. And he started pushing. The, the parking brake was still on, so he was on and everything. Like the training captain, said, what is he doing? I said, yeah, relax. So, yeah, so I said, all right, don't put me a pressure. I don't need the pressure now. You know, now I need to relax. Yeah, so, yeah. So you get this experience and you, you keep it in, in your memory, always in your memory. You remember this, what happened. Yeah, but yeah, it was, uh, this is as I said. Yeah, but uh, as I said, that the London flight, it was a, uh, it's a great memory for me because after the weather and everything, but we managed to land, and I, I made sure to land as, as smooth as it could. Even the weather, and it's not recommended to land as smooth, but for me, I said, oh, these guys are panicking. I just think about them, just relax them. I said, yeah, so this is a great memory, great memory to fly with the people who are flying with them, interesting. Yes, I had a lot of fun, I had a lot of fun, yeah. But as I said, solo, be a captain, that's the greatest things for me. Yeah. Lances is the only one, Omani Lances. Omani Lances. I used to have an Australian, not a UK. I used to have an Australian, but expired because I didn't renew it. And I used to have a UAE. Okay. Uh, yeah, UAE Lances. And the rating expired, but the Lances still have it. So I have to renew my rating for that. The aircraft flew. No, UK didn't have it. Australian, UAE, and Omani. Yeah. I, as I said, I started uh, flying in Prestwick in Australia. Sorry, I'm lying. Scotland. Prestwick in Scotland. Yeah, it's south of Glasgow. Is that south? No, no, no. I didn't get my lances there. Yeah, training. Then I moved to Australia. In Australia, then I got my lances. Flying lances in Australia. I was in Adelaide, in the Parafield. Then I moved to Bankstown in uh, Sydney. Then I finished my flying down there. And then back to Oman. And then I moved to UAE. I got my lances there. And uh, back to Oman again. Yeah. Oh, yes. You know, solos. Even my solo, it was. It's like uh, my life is not, not planned for everything. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> really? No, because my first day because you have to do ground school for two months first of all then before you go to flying so my first day of flying it was bad weather and they outside so the instructors comes in with my partner flying partner at that time and uh, he tells me he tell, keep tell us uh, oh, the weather is not good we're not gonna fly today because the weather but he was keeping over the weather weather i wasn't listening to anything i wasn't listening i was, I was dreaming about the and then I told him, okay, when are we going to fly? I just was explaining, oh, come fly. I said, no, 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 we need to fly. And so he took us. I said, you want to fly? All right, all right, come on. It was bad, but for me, it was nice, you know. And then, even though I was doing the training, the instructor said, your partner is going to do the solo before you because you're not, you're not performing well, you're not performing well. I said, okay, no problem. I was just doing my job. And then suddenly, one day, I was doing well. I said, you know what? That's it. This is your day. Go do your solo. I did my solo before my partner. So uh, I think it was the second one I did my solo. I think I did around 12 hours solo. So it was not bad. For me, it was happy. Then I go. I think on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, approaching 16,000. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my dream, my dream is 350. Even my previous airline, I was waiting before I, res I resigned. I was waiting because it was supposed to come then. It was delayed, delayed. But it was, I said, I'm going to fly 350, then that's it. Anyway, I, didn't, I couldn't fly 350. But I start flying, uh, flying school, of course. I was flying with a PA-28, a Papa Warrior 28. Then I moved to Tobago. 10, Tobago 20, Dutchess 76, which is twin engines. And then uh, when I finished flying school, I come back to one, suffering a focal friendship, uh, F27, then ATR 42, 737, when I joined another airline, I start flying 330, 340, 
and uh, finally 380. As, as I said, my dream is 350, so hopefully, technology wise, and it's a top of range. You know, all those people want to fly, right? Yeah, people used to want, even though if I get a chance to fly 747, yeah, I own, I own my, but uh, yeah, 350 the aircraft, because after flying Airbus, <laughs> it's a different class. Airbus is a different class, right? And the strange thing, when I moved from here, 73 to 330, I didn't like 330. It was too automation for me. Because 73 is kind of challenging, you fly by yourself and everything. So the 7th and 330, I said, oh, that's, that's too much automation, you know? It took me almost one year to like the aircraft. And especially the, uh, there's a lot of technical to understand. Opposite of 7373 is a basic, you have to know. It's easy to understand the aircraft. But in uh, Airbus, it's a lot of the technology, you have the automation, you have to, to understand more. So, but yeah, once 13 years with Airbus, yeah, that's it, that's it. Airbus is a beautiful aircraft. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, and the 350 is kind of tells you what to do next. Even the flap selection, even flap selection, the speed now, you can select flaps, something like that. So yeah, I wish you could fly 350, yeah. Hopefully one day. Therefore, I don't think it still there exists. I used, I really want to fly the, the Hong Kong, what was called the Kai Tai for the approaches, what they used to be in the approach there. Yeah, that's the one I, will, I will really wanted to fly that one. Even though I went to Hong Kong, but uh, I flew the new one. But the old one, yeah, yeah the guys were there telling me, and then you saw the videos and everything. It's flying next to the buildings and everything. Yeah, uh, I wish you, you could have fly. No, no, no. I should have done, right? Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell us we have to arrange it for me. I wish you could fly. But I flew in similar, it's not kind of similar. In Khasab, when we used to fly in Etihad to Khasab, we used to fly into the valleys and everything. Yeah, it used to be interesting. Uh, it's challenging. This is the thing, the fly, flying is challenging, yeah. But in New York, they call something approach called Kanasi approach. But it's not uh, ALS. So this Kanasi approach, you come to runway 13, I think. 13 left. I'll, I'll check it, but yeah. So he can, <laughs> it also is a challenging, and I uh, had the same thing one, one day when, with the weather. So he can, hard enough, and then you break visual, you're supposed to break visual, then you start dis descending, and then you maintaining, then you have to look for, we call it a race track. So this race track is a color and everything. You have to be, before the race track, you have to intercept the island to land. Yeah, so. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a bit challenging, but you have to be quick in everything, yeah, yeah, yeah and then especially in America, is uh, very quick, you have to, you can't say, ah, uh, let me think, no, they are pushing you. I was going there, and as you know, that New York is too far, so you have to have to have four set of, uh, two set of crew, I mean, two captain, two, uh, two first officers, and then somehow the level, we didn't get it, so we had to go to low level. At uh, that time, I was in my rest time. Then when I came back in, it was, it was my turn. So I said, what happened here? I said, ah, oh, we, lo we lost a lot of fuel now. So it was very risky. And uh, it was a weather in New York and traffic and everything. And this guy, they gave us Karnasi and Porch. So I couldn't land because of the weather and everything. So I, oh, I did a go around and now I'm getting the lowest view as a, to divert to Philadelphia. That's it. It was only option to less of Philadelphia. The good thing the first officer told me, Captain, why well, don't try to ask for another runway which is close by uh, with the ILS and everything? I said, oh, try it. I don't want to go to the Philadelphia. So he said, can we use the runway 2 2? I still remember. Yeah. ILS with runway 2 2. He said, yeah, you could do it. So, Landed, which you could have given give us from the beginning, you could have saved all these drama things. Yeah. yeah. Sport, football. But I'm injured now, so I can't play football anymore. So, yeah. Like, I love watching football a lot. 
sports. My generally, I like to watch football, volleyball, sometimes handball. Yeah, this is my kind of what uh, I like to watch. PlayStation. <laughs> now, I'm always other football. Uh, even there's nothing to watch in the football, that then I go to. Yeah, football is, is my passion. And I like to watch our football. Before I got my injury, I used to play a lot, even though nowadays I can't. So, and I watch a sport, I'm just sitting with my brother. It's a daily thing. And uh, with my family, that's a daily thing. It's not me. It's my wife. Seriously. People that misunderstand that. She's like the rock, right? She's the one. She's the one set up everything. Because she and if she understands what aviation is, I mean, I'm talking about a, a wife or a spouse. If they understand what aviation is, that's it going to make it easier for us for your life. Yeah, she was. She even now I come back from a flight. Even till now, my kids. Until now, I come back from a night flight or something like that. Nobody. I, it doesn't bother me a lot today if you come to the room, but, but she makes sure nobody, she made it for me since they're young. Your father's come from a flight, nobody gets in the room. So I never get disturbed, you know. Before my flight, I need to rest. I, I tell them going for my rest, it's same thing, same rules. Nobody is there. And nowadays it's not that busy, but it used to be very busy. The kids, I can't see them a lot, and, uh, you know. I, when I see them, I see them on the weekdays. And they, once, I think I had almost one week. Uh, they go to school, I come back from work. And then I wake up, I go to work, they were sleeping. So I, three days like that, yeah, three days I can't see them. Yeah, so, so I used to have, a, when I get my annual leave, take my kids two weeks, three weeks away from the country, go somewhere. They, been, they travel a lot, they travel a lot. So, unfortunately, uh, because due to the corona, the last two years, uh, we couldn't travel a lot. But yeah, so the wife, the wife, she is the one who arranged my life because she understands what aviation is. That's it, it will be easier for your life. That's it. <laughs> Thank you for your time. You finished exam? You're supposed to start now. My son has exam final. I, what's it called? I, I, G, what's called? I G I G I S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh, okay, sir. Let me help you. Let me help you. Yeah, love it. Nice. He went to the wrong day. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to us, even though it happened, yeah. Yeah, in the flying, you know, I went to flying, he said, oh, you came one, I said, why can't I log in? He said, yeah, you came 24, day, 24 hours earlier. I said, what? I don't take photos. Oh, yeah. It's not like him. <laughs> Usually I take photos when I want to know my, I know my kids. Because why are you strong? Why are you taking the photo too close? That's why. <laughs> so I take the photo and I'll send it there. But don't stop doing that. <laughs> so, yeah, especially when I used to WhatsApp them, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, so I said, oh, I'm traveling now. I said, why? Why are you too close? <laughs>